FNR, Football Nation Radio. Bucciatis, no call! Score! Salamidis for Cole. Cole on the run. Shoots. 2 0. Lazanowski with the free kick. Launches a rocket! Trimboli, what vision! Math blasts. Yes, that's it! Vinjevic. Here's Bazanic. They have it! They have it! They might have won it! The Pioneers. With George Danikian and George Kotsanis on FNR Football Nation Radio. Welcome to Evenings on FNR Football Nation Radio, your voice of football in Australia and throughout the world. It's 7pm on a Thursday, which means it is time for the Pioneers. And joining me, as he does every Thursday, is George Katsanis. George, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks, Atlas. Good to see you, buddy. Very good to be here tonight. And you've brought in another football pioneer in Australia. Would you like to introduce him? Absolutely. Our special guest tonight is Stephen Chikuti. Welcome, Steve. Hey, George. Atlas. Great to have you in the studio. Thanks for the, taking up the invite. Now, um, before I forget, and you failed to tell us last week, it was your birthday last Friday. It was. Uh, so happy birthday, 20. Yes, 20. Well done, young fella. Thank you. All the best wishes for last week, so we didn't want to forget that. Um, we've got this way of starting the show every week um, where we ask our guests what their very first football memory was. Am uh, I testing the memory there? Yeah, it's... Um I had a bit of think about this uh, from sort of a non-playing memory. Going to George Cross games, uh, both sides of the family, mum and dad, it's mad George, George Cross people. We won't hold it against them. Um, is, that like, is that almost like one word, mad George Cross supporter? Yeah, I think almost, so. Yeah. Especially in our family. Yeah. Um, my favourite memory, I think, was playing, you know, two on two, three on three, behind the goals at Schindler Reserve with a young Bruce Gardner. Oh, really? And Kevin Walker's son. Like, yeah, which was like, almost like a car park, was it? Perfect. Or was it no, we were actually on the ground. Oh, okay. We used to use the back of the net as goals. Ah, oh, yes, yes. yes. So, <laughs> you know, and this, this would have been like you know, early 70s, 71, 72, around that sort of time. I mean, John won, League. Yeah, yeah, Shipman Reserve playing just, or I think George Cross back then were playing at home at, at Shipman. Yeah, they had, had a few home grounds in the yeah, time. Yeah, so. A little bit better one. Yeah. <laughs> there was a little bit of that. Um, so, do you recall going to like the old Ampol Cup games and oh, absolutely yeah. and the big game? You know, dad, you know, my dad was came out here in '55 and he followed George Cross everywhere and he'd show photos and I can remember going to the uh, Olympic Park and you see John playing and Tommy Fox and Kevin Walker, uh, Norm Maitland, I think Luke Hasner was playing back then, all those sort of guys and he just it went every week and. 15,000 people in an Apple Cup game. Dad was a big influence. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, Dad, Maltese family, he's one of ten, Mum's one of ten. Okay. We just had our own football team and everywhere we went, you'd just be playing football. You know, you'd have pick-up games on a Sunday. You know, we just grew up with it. So, And he was through it. You know, he's still a massive influence on me. He's been a mass, massive influence on my nephew, on my, on my sons as well. He's, he's coached for quite a few of the generations in the Chikuti. All right, so he did a fair bit of coaching. Yeah. Okay, cool. So how many how many boys or how many children in your family? Uh, so I'm one of four. I'm oh, the eldest. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then there's I think there's about thirteen or fourteen grandkids. Okay, cool, cool. So with the siblings, a lot of uh, backyard wars. Or uh, no, not with us. Um, there's ten years between myself and my brother. So by the time I cared, or he was good enough, I was. Sort of pushing him away and not really that interested, yeah, but yeah. you know, but uh, it was more the cousins. Uh, so on mum's side of the family, my uncle Paul was the secretary, vice president of George Cross. So you know, his sons, then there were other cousins, and we'd all be there. And you know, and then you'd meet all the other people, like Tony Chunter, who's coaching at Whittlesea, he'd be there, yeah. and we all grew up together. And then at different stages, obviously played together as well. 
play together, played against each together, other, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was just, it was a, you know, we lived in Glenroy in Hatfield. Yeah. Um, I think about my own kids, the stuff we used to do, we'd walk across Hilton Street, Box Forest Road, Sydney Road, as five-year-olds, <laughs> and then get, end up at someone's house and start playing football in the streets. Real pick-up games, you know. Put thongs on one corner, play barefoot. Well, it's all that sort of street football stuff, you know. And and it really did happen. And it was, you, would you do it for kids these days? Would you let them walk? I don't think I would. But anyway. Well, there's no street soccer, or there's no street cricket or football for that matter anywhere. It's just things have changed, obviously. But it's funny how different it was. I was only reminiscing the other day about playing in the paddocks in St Albans yeah. when there was spare land, I guess, in between houses. But that was a great opportunity to throw rocks or jumpers down and you play your one on one or your twos on twos and that's how we all grew up and then it's just sadly not a part of today's society is it? No, uh, on, there's a street in Hadfield called Gish Court it has a, I think the Moreland Junior Soccer Club has a, has a lot to be thankful of that one little court because it, there would be 40 kids running around in that street yeah. having a kick, a yeah, one way street nice little court and there'd be oh god I can't remember all the people but there it was, it was awesome like it was a great way to grow up. You know, it was all about fun, and you know, I suppose we we barely had electricity. That was that long ago. So Moreland City or Moreland Juniors became your first junior club. Yep, right? yep. Yeah, um, Location, location, I guess. Or was yeah, they yeah? Uh, the juniors were run by a great old bloke called Pat Contessa, and they were out at uh, back of St Thomas Moores in Hatfield. So was being a good Catholic boy, you'd go to church and you see these kids running around. And it was Moreland back then, because Moreland City is a merger between Coburg, Q and, Mor and Moreland. Yep. Um, and it was great, you know, uh, Hadfield back in the 70s, wasn't a great place to live, you know, it wasn't a wealthy area, pretty poor. Working class, we'll call it. Yeah, let's call it working class, that's yep. probably an upstate. Um, yeah, it started playing in 73, as a, as a seven year old or an eight year old. So couldn't wait to get going. Uh, shied away for the first few times and until mum grabbed me by the ear and took me there because she realised I wasn't actually training. I was just too shy. Yes, I was too shy. Okay. <laughs> the things that I, grew out, I grew out of it. Grew out of it. Grew out of it. Grew out of it. Right. Yeah. So, so once you grew out of the shyness, um, what are your memories of, you know, this actual bit of difference from the street soccer, playing with the cousins at, yeah. in the back of at Schindler, but now yeah. a bit a little more organised football. Yeah, well, the cousins joined all more, and so we all live in the same suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Family unit continued. Yeah, we did. Um, look, there's a photo, Mum's got it, of my cousin Tony and myself putting our socks on with these uh, almost like Hessian bag jumpers, the fairy, fairy ones. Yeah, the old heavy. It's just... Yeah. They were terrible in summer because you itched, yeah. and in, in, in winter you felt about 20 kilos heavier. So I remember that. Um, it, it was awesome. We played at Campbell Reserve yeah. when the ground was going uh, north south. Okay, so it was facing. So it was only one ground. Yeah. And yeah. you'd play under eights or under nines, and it'd be 20 kids running around in a little patch chasing a ball. Chasing that a ball. photo you pulled out, I just beg as belief where you found that. Uh, Under 11s or whatever it was. Thanks to the old soccer action, which we're all grateful for. Yeah, yeah, that's but, a great photo. So it was, it was awesome. And, and, you know, most of the kids could play because we, and that group of children, boys. Um, you know, you had this environment where I don't, I don't think it uh, politically correct these days, or it, it, the uh, the PC people would allow it. But every year. The contestants would organise for all the junior teams from under nines to under sixteens, get in buses, go down to Anglesey, and you'd have a three day weekend and be just go wild as kids. And you had this uh, feeling of okay, well this is what football's about. How good is this? I want to play, you know. And we did that every year. And some years we went to Adelaide, and it wasn't about eliteness. It was about a club going somewhere as a club. And they raise all the money through the year so that everybody could, no one had to pay anything. Yep. And off you went. So and about the unit, about sticking together. Yeah, absolutely. It, it ingrained certain qualities in people, I think. And um, there's still some people from even back then that I can still, I still talk to, say hello to. So it clearly worked. I, I would think so. It gives you a sense of purpose, a sense of community, a sense of belonging to something. A little bit different as we were discussing 
yes. off air with the current MPL system where perhaps that bonding and that longing to stay together the next season or the next season or to keep a team together has changed. Be part of the club. Yeah. It's, it's called a club for a reason. We play a team sport for a reason. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of tennis. Don't like singles. I do like golf, but it's a separate story. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, you play team sports to be part of something. To you know, you speak to most of us dinosaurs. What about fond memories? Uh, the pre-season camps, the end-of-season camps, the times when we actually conquested something together. We, we won something together. It's not the BNFs or the the singular uh, trophies. It's about what you did as a group. Not for the team people, no, that's dead right. You're yeah, dead right. So, and the tennis players, as we all them off air, probably remember their best and fairest and every goal they ever scored. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the Nuffies would also remember most of them, especially defenders like me who don't <laughs> score two or three. But that's only a, a rarity. You know, uh, remember your diamonds. But so when you got your nose bleeding and you went forward or whatever? Absolutely. Got dizzy, generally. Dizzy. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. All right, so you progressed through the juniors. You yep. had some um, exciting times in, and you also had some decent coaches there. I mean, your dad coached you. Is that, was he involved as a coach? Or? Yeah, he coached uh, till about 14. Yeah. And, you know, as you do as a 14 year old, you think you know the world. Dad's dad was, uh, was it? Every year I get older, my father gets wiser. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> he stepped away knowing when to let go. Yeah. Pretty headstrong young little brute. So and so. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, yeah, he stepped away, um, almost pulled, it, pulled a pin on football, sort of had enough of it all. Um, yeah, back then you do the regionals, the playing and all that sort of stuff and football for me was always about fun. It's never been about money, it's never been about trying to overachieve, just go and play. Yep. Um, that breeds a certain character, a certain headstrong character. Um, and uh, Terry Call Callahan's son was in our side, he was the president of the seniors, I was about to leave, and I just had enough and he, he asked me as a 15 year old, 16 year old to come up and play in the reserves. I think he convinced Sandy Henderson to put me on the bench for the first team. I didn't even know what I was doing. And uh, I was hooked and became part of the senior structure. Why, what was it that from not sort of just about to throw it away yeah. and then a sniff Boredom. of something, yeah, yeah, but the sniff of what? Or what was it that caught your men. attention? Men, like just the fact that you were. So my uncle Charlie was playing in the first team. A great bloke that you'd know, Tony Hamill. Yes, um, the great Tony. Yeah, uh, Matt Black, um, Mickey Waters. These sort of guys who were just men. I had they had mows. Yeah. Yeah, and sideburns. Yeah. Um, and they were brutes. And they took you in, had a chat to you, had a laugh, you know. And you got treated as a 16-year-old like this man. Like, and they think, what does every 16-year-old want to do? You want to be. You want to be an adult, you want to be with the, adult, yeah, be with the yeah, man. Yeah. And they had a bond, it was just lovely. And look, I had, my uncle was there and he looked after me like there's no tomorrow. So, and Sandy with his comb and his perfectly combed hair, um, as he's famous for, they looked after me. And then, so, you know, that was the only sniff I got. Got put in the twos and you got Peter Constantino and a few of those guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. was there, yeah. scoring goals like Shell and Pease. And it was, you're playing with men, and it was just different. You know, I'd had enough being, a, you know, one of the older boys in the juniors, and it just almost you need that challenge. It was, it was awesome. So it came at the right time. They made the right call and, and, and saved you and kept you in the game. Yeah, wisdom by adults. Yeah, to have the duty of care and, and, and soft hands with teenagers, and you know, not that I was precious or I didn't have any uh, resilience. I think I had all those things and. But there were some good adults around me who just knew, my father knowing when to let go yep. and just not interfere. Yep. He said things like, uh, you know, well, you need to do your own maths homework because you've already got an education more than I have. I'm not going to help you anymore. Get on with it. Um, a couple of years later, uh, Ringwood wanted to come and grab me to, to, to play there with Brooksy and so on. Yep. And I was training five nights to it to it more and three at Ringwood and Dad and I said, what should I do? Jim McRoberts was coaching them all and uh, Dad was like, what are you asking me for? Make a decision, son. You know, if you, do, if you make a mistake, don't be afraid. Okay. Tomorrow's another day. So it was great advice. Yeah, and, and just good people, like just having good adults around you. Yeah. 
So, so the coaching staff and, and the senior players obviously took an interest in you and, and most of probably the other young kids and that was how it was done in those days and that was the expectation I guess is that you live and die a little bit by the sword but there's still people there to look after you. Without doubt. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's interesting that there's I'm talking about the early eighties now, yep. right? No one knew what EQ was, you know, no one understood mental health, all those components, right? But what you had was this brethren that people just had duty and care of the young kids. It wasn't like we're going to push the young kids out and not give them a crack. We're going to bring the young kids in and we're going to let them into the community. We're going to... Nurture them. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to joke around with them. You're going to get the water, when you're in the showers, you're going yeah. to get the cold water and give them a good spray. Or you're going to get the other hot shower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, yeah. that might have happened occasionally. Yeah. Um, either way of breaking conversation. <laughs> <laughs> breaking concentration. <laughs> but you had just terrific people. Like, um, I still see Tony Kilpatrick, yep. who was in around that days. And Tony's, you know, his son coaches as a senior as a bully yep. in the women, women's program. Tony, I got utmost respect for him because he was soft and he was gentle and he, he looked after me even though, you know, when the right time was there. He's a good man, Tony, and he's a decent cook too, did you know that? He's eaten a few of his meals. Yeah, there's been a couple of meals. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, get back and talk to you about your senior days at Moreland just after this break. Welcome back to the Pioneers on FNR Football Nation Radio. Atlas Sirianos filling in for George Zemeckian, who is still serving suspension. He'll be back very shortly, though. Uh, George Katsanis is in the studio, as well as Stephen Chikuti, who is our pioneer tonight. We've only just scratched the surface. We've gone uh, in the early days of his junior career playing the two, three aside in, in the streets, barefoot with thongs as goals. But, George, I think <laughs> we're going to start moving forward now into his uh, football career. I'm going to get into some of the serious stuff now. So, as a Moreland player, as, you, as most, you play the resis, graduate, earn your stripes. How long before from playing in the resis did you get some senior football? I uh, got my first bench and then off the bench when I was 16. Yeah. Played against Keeler with a very young, muscly Aussie Latif. Aussie Latif, yeah. Scared of, scared the living daylights out of everybody he, he played intimidated against. intimidated everyone in those days. Scary. He? And he's such a nice... He, he's, he's a nice chap. He's a terrific <laughs> fella, but so, he had tats. Like, how? That was just And he was, he was pretty muscly, which was kind yeah. of weird for that, those days as well. He Absolutely. was a gym junkie, I reckon. <laughs> Bouncing at the uh, St Albans Hotel or something. Um, the Italian club, I reckon, on Furlong Road. <laughs> <laughs> Not my suburb, so yeah, yeah I'll yeah, take yeah, your word I'll on. Take my word. Um, so you, you come against a lot of Aussie Latifs. Yeah, and, and the following year, mate, probably when I see it, got in, Duncan Mackay took over as coach. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, you know, Lisbon Lion, uh, played for Celtic, Celtic. Scotland, yeah. fierce as you can be, you know, just 17 years old and... You know, half-time speeches were fire and brimstone. Yep. For some reason, he it, well, we had a, we had uh, Tony Hamill playing in the in the midfield. Tony was I think he was 26, and I think the next youngest was next oldest was 21. Okay. And so he was got a young 17 year olds. Uh, you know, Darren Pace was 16. Mark McDonald. So a pretty young side playing Division One, which is probably equivalent to MPL two now back then. Yep. The old Metro yep. one. Yes, that's right. Um, and he just played kids. And Moreland never had a lot of money, obviously. I think he got paid $30 and they took $20 out for tax or something. <laughs> Some fictitious tax yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. that probably never got paid. Um, but Duncan was great. Like, for me, he, he stuck me on the left-hand side of midfield and didn't realise I had no pace. And so just run up and down the flanks and I'm trying to cross the ball in. And brought me into the midfield with Tony, eventually. So, um, and, you know, you always respect your first coach who give you that crack because he saw something in you, you know, and he, 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 you know, he looked at him, you know, rose-coloured glasses. We always love the coaches who pick us. Uh, yes, yes, they're always the best coaches, the best of course. Coaches, yeah. Well, I, I don't know from an education point of view, I really learnt a lot. Yep. Um, I probably learnt more from the players. Yeah, you would have. Yeah, you know, the players around us yeah, who, who would yeah. just help you through the game, yeah. um, sometimes yelling at you when you get a square ball across the box. That's life. And that's what happens. Yeah. Um, How else are you going to learn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but he was, it, it was never, a, to me, never a negative word. 
he, he's fire and brimstone, was to everybody. Yep. Um, but individually, he would talk to you and say, look, you know, keep your head up. But it wouldn't be complicated. It was pretty simple. Okay. Tony Hamill, it hasn't yeah. been mentioned before in this show. Yeah. I played with um, Tony's brother, Billy, yeah. who I felt was an exceptional player. Yeah. It was hard, but he had a little bit of a technique, special yeah. technique. So Billy was like a velvet sledgehammer. Yeah. I, don't, I never saw Tony play. I hear a lot about him. So he came to he came to Mel, uh, to, to Moreland from Green Gully. Yep. So he was the big money money signing. Yep. yep. Um, and he was a legend at Green Gully. He was and he was outstanding. He's yeah. he probably you know I think back then we played you know four four two, you know, a couple of slabs and then two strikers and run for your <laughs> life. Um, Tony played that six and eight role yep. where he could sit deep, pick the ball, and he wanted to pick the ball up off the defence. So. When I'd play against him at training, you know, Dad would say, just go stand on Tony. And I'd follow him around and learn, but his ability to look up and ping a 30-yard ball was outstanding. But he was lazy, right? But Tony, he'd had enough at 26, and he lasted a year and then went to Old Tony City. Yeah, he did go to Old Tony City, yeah. You know, and, and, but again, crack and bloke, never a bad word. No, I loved like, the kids. Like I said, didn't, wasn't lucky enough to watch him play, but was lucky enough to have a beer with him, and he was a smashing bloke. Yeah. All right, so there's a couple of the other senior players that you would have learnt off at that time. Uh, Jim McRoberts was yep. pretty important. He took over. Jimmy came from Sunshine. Sunshine City, and yeah. Came, yeah. came back. Um, Jimmy and I probably played in the middle of the park most of the time together. Uh, whenever we're getting beaten, he'd always say, don't rush it, make sure you look good before the last five minutes. <laughs> Do a couple of good passes. That was so the, your advice? Yeah, so the referee would notice you and give you a couple of points. And did he, did he, did he do you all right vote-wise? He always did, did it all right. right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. He, right. he kept mauling up a couple of times by himself. Really? Yeah, he, he was. Well, he was a he was a full back, I think, at Sunshine, and, and at at Moor, and he was playing in midfield. Did a couple of mazes where he was a different class. So it was him. But we had, you know, there was uh, Mickey Waters, who probably no one ever know, uh, Scottish guy, he just fierce. If any of the young blokes got kicked, that. The guy who kicked him got kicked pretty soon after that. So he had a protector. He was he, from a role model point of view, and as later in my career about you know your responsibility as one of the older players in the side, the captains, vice captains. You've got a role, and and I think today's games probably we might not have lasted on the pitch as much as we did back the then. Is, the game is slightly different. Yeah. Yep. Um, but blokes like Mick used to taught me to okay, you've got a, a duty of care presence on the park. Right, which, which would help you later on when you took over as a leader and a captain of the different teams, held you in good stead. Yeah, yeah I hope so. Yeah, yeah cool. All right, so how did you end up at, or uh, well, when you left Moreland, you went to George Cross, have I got that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, played in that, remember the Old Nations Cup? Uh, yeah, the end of season, yeah. yeah the, so the, the, very, the very, yeah. very first, first one. was it? Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, Tony Vella picked us up and then George Cross saw me here, whatever, and took, put me in there as a top age youth team player. Trained with the first teams. Johnny Gardner was a coach. Jimmy Rooney. You know. Seven thirty. Johnny Gardner for the sweep. Those out there. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest coach I've ever played under. Yeah. yeah. Just a super educator. You know, gets you know occasionally gets accused of being aloof and you know arrogant, but he's not. Uh, from a that's from the outer outer, outer sanctum, but the inner sanctum is totally different, right? Yeah. Just educated. So sort of a, a young 19, 18 year old boy playing. He spent the time well ahead of his everybody else in that sort of genre around just breaking the game down for you so that you can go and do a role, go play your position, whether you played at centre half or you swept or if you played as a six, you know, I never got to play out in the flanks back then, they'd already figured out that I was too slow. Um, he was brilliant and it, it had time for you to talk. And Jimmy was Jimmy, like he's just a superstar. Jimmy Rooney. Rooney, he was in the youth team, the youth team coach. Yeah, he, so he was, I, I captained the so, that side, and yeah. he, he, Jim was just fantastic. Told me off for wearing thongs to the first game of the NSL season. Yep. Yeah, look after your tools of trade, son. And I, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll let you listen quick, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think that. you would have worn thongs again, would you? No, I got fined. I, I was yeah, probably the only player in the youth team got fined, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so did you enjoy your time there? Or? Yeah, it was good. Um, People like Carl Gilder, uh, I was about to say faulty then, Jeff Faulkner, um, <laughs> Mr. McLaren, Donnie McLaren, yeah. uh, 
um, all those guys. That, that, was, that was terrific. Luke Kastner was in goal, so here still I am. Still around. And still around. Right. Well, John brought him back to George Cross, yeah. right? So here I used to go in you know, 72, 71, watch John and Lou and that sort of yeah. stuff, and there's Luke Kastner in goals. I actually bumped into him this year. He's a uh, goalkeeper coach at Bulleen. He's still involved. In he's game. still involved. He's about 110 years old, yeah. and he still looks like he could still play. Well, that's what happens when you fall in love with the game. You just can't give it up in whatever shape or form, and it's great to, great to see that he's still heavily involved and doing what he enjoys. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Now, you told me off air that Johnny Gardner yeah. let you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, said, it got, it went through a pre-season, and he, um, you know, Defenders mature, right? Whatever, right? Um, and he, he said they're going to they're going to bring in two new defenders. One was Sean Parton and Chris Katsakides, and and I was going to be fourth in line. So best to go play seniors. Yep. You're going to be 20. Go play. And we had a conversation. It was a negative. You know, I'm shattered. I'm trained five nights a week. You know, I'm at university, all that sort of stuff. And, um, the way he handled it was absolutely professional. Uh, said he organised a, a trial with and, and a, to play at Melbourne with Paddy Bannon. Yep. I didn't end up going there. That's my own decision. But the duty of care, you know, which is I think missing in today's game, um, was there back in the dark ages. Right? So, so I'm just dumping and no. see uh, it was how can I help you going forward? And this is what I think you could do, whatever. So it was a lot of follow through. Absolutely. And you know, there were gold medal nights, or back then we called them the Rockmans. The Rockmans, yeah. yeah and, and Johnny be there, and he'd always come up to me yeah. as a dual winner of the Rockmans and to say, how'd you go this season, how are you tracking, da, 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 da. in John's way, which was always quiet, sort of out of the side of his mouth. He wasn't a, you know, a big, big talker. No, he's understated. And yeah. Just fantastic. Beautiful. Glad to hear that. And we got our Johnny Gardner mention for the week without even trying. Hey, got two. Got, got Bruce Gardner's early on, too. Yeah, you did. did. <laughs> um, so you ended up going to Polonia. Yes. Why? Yes. Um, this will shock a few people. Turned up uh, another cousin playing there. Uh, turned up uh, Ray Chikuti, who's Ray. the uh, older brother of Jamie, who's now the president. Oh, I know of Ray. Ray and I are the same age. Went to school together. Yeah. Well, so yeah, Ray was playing Ray there, was there was, yeah. and you know, Jamie's now the president of George Cross. Yes. Anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, they stuck me on the right wing. Yeah, it's just a beggar's belief, right? And um, one, they must not have realised I had no pace and obviously didn't real realise I had no right foot. And I scored two goals, and which again was like, must be down the record. The red, get us put the record to that goal. And they said, no, we want this player. And the, apparently the coach at the time, I won't mention his name, said to the committee that I found our goal scoring uh, solution for uh, the season. No, mention his name. Kaz Kulik. <laughs> so you, you were the striker that Kaz found. I was the goal scoring machine that he found okay. and was going to save Polonia. Well, that was a that didn't last long. Did it didn't last long, very. No, no, no. So once they realised that you weren't a striker or a winger or a right footer for that matter, correct? Where did they decide to play? I, we, we, it was all over. We were a bit at sea, uh, Polonia. Um, the club, it, I think, it, uh, yeah, it sort of struggled a little bit halfway through the year. Um, Cass got sacked, and the infamous Miriam Bleiberg turned up. The human headline. The human headline, yes. Um, and yeah, I was playing, uh, I can't remember really, ball over the shop, whatever. Um, Miriam turned up, and in came 10 new players. Yep. So Jerry Bennett, uh, Rad Nelson, Gordon Favell, Key Storm, Aki Kotsam Achilles. Hey. Um, Alex Marshall? Alex was already there. Alex come back from Poland. He was okay. a federal policeman. He yeah, came yeah, back yeah, yeah. twice the man he was before. He it, was a big man to start with. He was a big man. That's, uh, Alex is gorgeous, right? Great, yeah, yeah, great yeah. human being. Um, so all these players turned up. Joe Kiss, and so we had this massive squad, bottom of the ladder, and avoided relegation. Uh, I was, in, you know, from playing regular first uh, MPL two equivalent for Moreland, go play. National Youth League, get a game off the bench, blah, blah, blah. Go down to Premier State, League, yeah. can't get a game, I'm in the twos. Mirren, you know, just thought I was garbage. Yep. Different lens. Yep, that's it. Probably, Coaches see things differently. Yeah, probably thought I, probably, I was probably right, probably head was too big, but anyway. <laughs> um, Pre-season, couldn't get a run playing in the Magoos. 
and the club, we were on top of the ladder, the club runs out of money halfway through the year, Mirren does a runner, Rob takes over, Rob Nelson, Rob Nelson, Rob Nelson yeah, yeah. looked at me and said, you're playing, and you know, it was awesome, right? again, almost about to pull the pin, sliding doors moments as you do in your football career, I'd say things happen, you stay the course, football's a long game, not a short game. Different coach, different opinions, different eyes. That's exactly right. Discussed. Yeah, yeah. Played and he put me in front of Brendan Lakic on the left wing again. Didn't realise I had no pace. <laughs> and uh, Brendan was playing full back in one game. Brendan goes, "Can we just swap? You go play left back and I'll oh, play." Yeah, Brendan we'll do that. Did run and he had an engine as well. And he loved running too. Yeah. He was a bit of a loose cannon. Yeah. Yeah. But it was awesome. Our back four by the end of it was me on the left, Ricky Lipiaski, Jerry Bennett. And uh, and Aki Kotsen Achilles. Okay. Right. So Ooks and I, similar age, I'm one yeah. year older. Solid defence, didn't cons we'd win, I think won six games in a row, one nil. Yeah. And I remember Rab on the last game of the year said, We're on top. Uh, if my nuffy brain can remember. The day you won the league, yeah. it was against Western Suburbs. Suburbs. And it was about 36 degrees, it was a Carlton Hawthorne grand final. I was on the You're bench more of a suburbs. nuffy than me. Yeah, I was on the bench for Suburbs that day and I wanted to be home. Watching the grand final because I'd already played a full game in the rest. Well, that, so, so yeah, yeah. The, the pre match talk that Rob did was, I will never forget, I've used it for different reasons. Was, uh, all right, who's going to score the winner today? That was it. And Rooks put his hand up and uh, scored that header, and we win, we win 1 0. It was the sixth game that we'd won, and Gully got beat by Brody, and we won the league by three points. So, got a free, a free Kransky. And a beer after the game, and that was about it. That's all out for Polonia. Yeah. <laughs> it was a big day. <laughs> it was a big day uh, it was in that old ground. Yeah, Rawley Reserve. Rawley Reserve. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful awesome. old ground. Yeah. yeah, it was fantastic. With its old wooden grandstands and yeah. the like. And that was a good day for you. So I remember it because I didn't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it was hot. Yeah, was Tommy Daly there? At the no, not yet. He was there the following year. Yeah, he came yeah. a bit later yeah. on. Yeah. No, it was it was great. Like uh, Darren Tuck was playing though. Yeah, Tucky. He's Tucky a great there. human being. Yeah, an absolute special human being. Um, for another time, that one. So you found your way to Gully. Yeah, played another year Yeah, at Polonia. Um, Didn't go as well? No, it was all right. We finished yeah. mid-table. Yeah. Jim McIntyre took over. Stuck around. Loyalty card again. You know, hopeless. Um, and Willie Vassallo, who I loved. Um, well, he said, come, come across. Came across um, me, Tom Daly. Uh, Kevin Harrison. Johnny Metaxas go over as well at the time, or was he? Your yeah, I th yeah, yeah, I think it was that, that year. Time, it, might, yeah. it might have been the year later. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ooks hadn't come across yet. He went to Sunshine. Um, but yeah, we all went across. There was Steve McClellan there, Stewie Cannell, Gary Cutler, John Grimwald, Steve Fargus, on some side. Yeah, on paper. But. Yeah, but. Come but. on. Well, yeah, if you, Now's the time. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 think I think it's I, I, in Peter Dezira's book, yeah. The Gully, right? So yeah. it's pretty clear on what I said. Super side, a lot of big personalities, and you know that that team should have won the league. It was a, a cracking top four. Yeah. You know, I think you had Ben Heidelberg and a few others around that time. Um, yeah, I can't remember the whole who was in it. Comp, but it was just fierce. You know, you, the hardest part of the, the season was training. Because you got more belts and there's training from the physical challenges. It was it wasn't for the faint-hearted. Yeah. Games were, were a doddle. Yeah. It was that sort of environment. And, you know, Willie's a great coach. I, I'm not sure there's too many coaches that could control that group. Yeah, it's probably too well, many. Too many. Too many alpha males. Just, just massive. You know, but, you know, we're all pretty good mates, and we see each other. You know, now. But back then, a few times, it was just a bit clicky. You know, and and you just that desire to get into the first 11 and if you weren't in the first 11 you're crap and so you're in my position I'm going to take it it was almost overboiled you know um, so it was competitive and it was dog eat dog yeah it was probably too competitive probably too yeah and, and Willie loved it right so he loved that stuff and I loved it yeah and you know, you know Mark Wilson I just saw his name pop up yeah. Muncher was just huge right so anybody that size with that physical presence it's enormous, and he came from St Albans, right? Yes, he yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. Irish, Irish lad. Yeah, yeah. Plays off four of his handicap in golf. Does he? Yeah. yeah well, so. and he was a good mate of Jed Stenson's. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, so. But Jed wasn't. He was at yeah, Western Suburbs. Yeah, so yeah. He was some player too, by the way. Yeah. Um, but it was just physical, and you know, Kevin and Tommy scoring goals like you know, there's no tomorrow. Just.
just a really good side. Well, we know, we know Tommy listens, so tell us why he's the best player that ever played. Well, he's not. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's the funniest player. Okay. Well, he's the second funniest player I've ever played with, a guy called uh, Elsie, who also played in that side. Kevin. Kevin Elsie, that's yeah. right. He's a bit strange. He'd turn up after being surfing or whatever. He was a bit weird. <laughs> uh, but Tommy was just funny. Like right. he'd, he'd, I swear he thought he was Chris Waddle. Okay. Do his little mazes on the flank yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. sort of dink it, beat the player five times and dink it in. But terrific. You know, like we, we chat occasionally. We, we, we all caught up at uh, Kevin Harrison's 50th. You know, it hugs all around. And, and I think that gets back to that, you know, being part of a club. But, you know, yes, you have fears, but you share something, that little bit of effort, and, that, and running up and down that St Albans Hill, and running around Brimbank Park in 38 degrees, and Willie on his bike pedalling up past you. Come on, run, run. It's hard to find awesome. a shortcut through Brimbank. Uh, there are some, but you need to be very crafty. So, in Willie's last year as coach, <laughs> you know, the... Charlie was in goals, Charlie Sam, yep. Aki, Aki was there then, and myself. Willie would also, yeah, Peter Spiteri and all these sort of whippets running around. You know, could, Trying to impress. He's <laughs> just killing us. So Willie would always wait at a certain corner and just show us another way to get around and cut off a corner or two. Uh, okay. But we have to wait and sort of wait for the others to get past so we can still come in last. Now, having done that in pre-season, at Ringbank, I know all about the shortcuts and how important they were to the older fella. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you, I just want to throw some word association and some names, because as we do each week, we're going to run out of time. It's, it's a given and it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. But only because I, I'm interested and I'm hoping yeah. that we'll prick some ears at, with the listeners. But the word association, I'm going to throw up. Peter Spiteri is one I want to talk about. Yeah. He came up as a young... Yeah, he made his debut when I was playing. When you were playing. Um, what made him such a good player? Great set of ears. Yeah. Could run all day, obviously. Really, really good athlete. fit. Super athlete. Yeah. But he had a super set of ears. Yeah. So if a younger player into the side, you know, back then we played with the sweeper, you could communicate and people just do. Yeah. Until he understood what to do. Easy. Yeah. Easy. And he kept the game simple. Yeah, simple. he was a good player. Good player, fast. Got sent off once for dodgy tackle against Oakley, I remember. Yeah, I, <laughs> I never let him down. I think he got sent off more than once. <laughs> we'll, we'll let him we off. We won't tell his son that. No, no, we won't tell him. Sash Bechanovsky. Uh, I think with Derek Hunter, the two best strikers I ever played with. Yeah. They, Sash, young, you know, 17, 18 top goal scorer, 19 years old top goal scorer. Derek was a perfect folly, smaller yeah. target person. Um, but Sash could score, and he he was. I don't know why uh, he didn't play more in his cell games because he was good enough. Because re my reckoning, I'm not, not a great coach, but if you can score at a level, generally you should be able to score again at the next level. So if you've got goals in you, if the right coach knows how to position you and look after you and pump you up, you've got to, be able to score at every level, are you? Yeah, well, he, he scored some goals that were just. And, you know, that top end of the, back in the Premier League days, you know, a lot of those guys got picked off and went to Morwell so they could play at the NSL level. So there was a reasonable stand. Sash was, he was high class. Like, his touch, his speed, turn of pace. There weren't too many defenders that could stay with him. OK. Billy Lizopoulos. Uh, uh, Hawthorne supporter. Came from Hawthorne Soccer Club originally. Well, <laughs> Billy, Just, love him to death. Yeah. Racehorse. Uh, he was he was broken when he came to Gully. After he, Footscray Jay was too. Yeah, yeah, so he was, had a he, few serious injuries, including yeah, the head. Yeah, and he, and he'd done his hammy a few times. But Billy, well, I'm a mad Collingwood supporter. Right. Don't mention the grand final. No, I won't. Uh, um, I mention the wall. No, I mention the wall. Uh, Billy and I'd be sitting there, and we'd be talking about the football results, and he'd, he'd be going out and say, "Oh, can I just go for a second, get the radio? How's Hawthorne going?" Yeah. Loved him. Bumped into him on that reunion at Aki and oh, okay. organised. Yeah. Billy and I just having a chat. He's a cracking human being. Yeah. Look, surprised that he turned into a defender because at suburbs he was a tearaway striker yeah. and he was super quick. And one of my lasting memories of going to watch a Dockley Cup semi final suburbs versus Faulkner the year Faulkner won it, I think about 84. Yeah. Faulkner won the semi 4 1 class suburbs but this guy and I was at Olympic Park and I remember sitting in the stand watching this guy knock balls past defenders and leaving them for dead and I'm thinking to myself I've never seen this at any level he was just 
electrifying and luckily I got to train with him and play with him a little bit. Six foot one, six foot two, six, yeah, six was, one. Yeah. You know, and running at a probably high eighties kilos. Yeah. You know, and, and to be that quick. Yeah, it was how do you stop it? No, he was good and then turned into a pretty decent defender. Yeah. He was still playing I think he was still playing in midfield with us. Probably wide but slowing down. Yeah. Excellent player. All right, we're just going to take a break and uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll uh, continue on with Stephen Chikuti on the Pioneers. The Pioneer. Streaming football 24 7. This is the Pioneers on Football Nation Radio FNR. George Katsanis and Athos Sirianos filling in for George Janikian, who's still serving a bit of a suspension. George, we are coming up in stoppage time now, and as we do every week on the Pioneers, we are running out of time. Yeah, we do run out of time, unfortunately. So I know you spent a lot of time at Gully, eight years, and you got to captain the club, which would have been an honour, and you got to obviously do the reverse and mentor some young fellas. Unfortunately, we're going to run out of time, so I want to make sure we don't miss or skip sure. a lot of other bits. You went on to Doncaster and had three years there. How did that come about? And Living close to the ground. Um, <laughs> location, location. Location, again. location. <laughs> uh, running a business, pretty busy, travelling a fair bit. I couldn't ask any more favours from Chris Taylor. I think there was a <laughs> six week period at Gully where I didn't train and he played me every week. Yep. Um, so it's just time. Uh, even at 31, I probably could have, obviously could have played a bit longer. But Other focuses. It, it just happens, right? Um, so I played a year and then coached, took over as coach. And last year, 99 was pretty successful. We, couple of points off from being promoted with the team with a whole bunch of young kids in it and a couple of old dinosaurs like myself and Stevie Hackett. Um, fun. It was a hell of a lot of fun seeing those kids come up. And that's so did you take naturally to that? Yeah, I, yeah, I play a coach. Yeah, but did you find that it was a natural progression or just something you just yeah, gravitated well, to? It was easy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and it was, look, I swept for the last six or seven years and fundamentally when you're sweeping when you had the luxury of your ladder sweep um, you're, you're coach coaching the you're coaching yeah. on the field anyway. yeah. so um, it was great and and there were some really good young kids that came out through the juniors and we played the kids the club didn't have a lot of money I think the budget was about 20k back then um, it was good it was fun and that that final year we beat Heidelberg last game of the year they got promoted Stubbsy was there we beat I think we beat them 4-1 or 4-2 at the village and four of the goals were scored by kids Okay, so we does that justify the job that you've been doing? Yeah, I, I, I so don't think I had. Yeah, I don't think I had the, the vi uh, a vision of doing that or making that what I want to do. Um, but uh, you know, the, the justification, the, the, the self-esteem you get out of it, yeah. the personal satisfaction. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's unparalleled. Okay, cool. All right, you went to Tassie in Kingborough Lines. Yes. Now, I assume you went to Tassie for work. Is that yeah. Right? Yeah. I was. Uh, involved in a three-way merger to build some businesses and uh, and I spent I sent them off an email to a bunch of clubs and uh, they do you want a 35 year old old hack with his one side went to Kingborough set up a youth academy there played in the seas played up front of course they didn't realize uh, I had no pace um, you seem to disguise that pretty well through your career I don't think I tried to disguise it. <laughs> um, yeah and I was there for uh, two years and had some personal success. You know, standards a bit lower in Tassie. Um, you know, got some awards and all that sort of stuff. But it was fun. I, and again, the best bit about it was the kids that you were coaching. The academy we set up was was pretty good. David Smith was the TD of yep. Tassie back then. Yep. Um, a lot of fun. Great. I think it gave me a, a, a lens of how a integrated club could run. So Tassie's like country football, five senior teams. Ones and twos play on a Saturday, the thirds, fourths and fifths play on a Sunday. Got nothing to do on a Sunday afternoon, you go down to the ground and watch the team, have a few beers and sausage sizzle, happy days. Beautiful. And then you found your way back. Oh, actually, you come back to Melbourne and you ended up at Langy. Yeah. I was, was under to, Gus? Yeah, went to Norway for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Came back, work again. Didn't, didn't convince anyone in Norway that you were quicker than you were? No, no. no park soccer and... Uh, Probably won too many ales at a certain pub called Macbeth in Trondheim. Um, coached George Cross for six months. Yeah. Um, won the Dockery Cup. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, Another second division side. Cup. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that sort of fell apart like uh, certain things do when you're a bit black and white like me. You do it this way. Headstrong? Well, I, I think it was more about, you know, 
the, you know, certain politics in the club, and I, well, I, I, politics I, and, I don't, and I don't deal with it. I, I, I pretty much we're going down a certain way. We agree to a certain thing. We do that. Um, and I got a phone call from my brother-in-law who was playing at Langy, so we need a sweeper. Who's your brother-in-law? Uh, Paul Arno, yep. who might be listening from sunny Queensland. Um, I turned up, Gus said, you beauty, introduced me, and I think, oh, who's this 38-year-old, hasn't played for a while. He said, turn up at two o'clock at Diamond Valley. I must be on record as the only sweeper to cramp up. I, he started me in the game, I thought it was ridiculous. I cramped up within about 70 minute mark. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't played for three years. body cramp. Yeah, yeah, it's no good. <laughs> no, that was great, 33 games at Lange over two years, got promoted the following year for division, out, of, out of Division Two. Craigie Lewis, Jamie McMinimi, Greg Kilner, the Caffreys, uh, just some great, great players. You know, Craigie Lewis is on one leg and he finished top goal scorer. Oh. No, it's just sensational. Proof that if you can play anywhere, you'll score anywhere. Yeah, yeah it was Gus, is, yeah, Gus used to say things like, lads, we're fitter than the others, and we'd all look at each other saying, we can't, can barely last another 10 <laughs> minutes with that, with that old. Um, probably a bit harsh, it was a good side. Um, and finished it up at playing at Moore. I went back to Moore, got the call, and what was it like coming back after all these years? Yeah, like I said to you before, I think... Um, don't go back. Don't go back to your junior clubs. It's never <laughs> as good as what you think it was. And look, Moreland's a super club. Yeah. And what they've done this year with yeah. AD Mathers and Morris Pizzetto. Sensational. To get to where they've got to from where they are, outstanding. Uh, we kept them up for two years. One year as a player coach, snapped a driving muscle, realised at 40, I'm done. Um, coach next year, and, and since then I've been doing kids. Okay, so you're currently involved at Bulleen. So tell us what you're doing there and why you're involved. Uh, yeah, so uh, my youngest daughter plays in the under-14s. Yep. Um, I spent the year mentoring Kate and Friend yep. and helping Jeff Hawkins as a TD, just in the background doing bits and pieces. Uh, been involved there quite heavily this uh, last year and this year. Um, Do you enjoy that? Love it. Oh. Um, so what, explain to us, what mentoring mean in this, in this capacity? Yeah, so at the start of the year, uh, Caitlin had got a C licence um, and helped her through, you know, how do we set up game plays and so on. She was doing her drills and rondos, etc. Yeah. And as, as the year progressed, you do less and less. And by the end of the year, you're doing nothing. And you've got to let go and, and let, let them run, as they say, right? So um, just providing some guidance, some yeah. grey hair. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's fun because I think as we get older, um, Doing the, the drills, the warm ups, the, uh, the rondos, you know, 30, 40 years of doing them, yeah, probably seen a few. Yeah. <laughs> Having a conversation and asking questions like, you know, what do you think our problems are? Or what do you think we should be doing next? Or why is that child struggling? Uh, they're far more intellectually stimulating. Okay, so you're enjoying it? Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you think you'll continue doing that? Um, I think uh, next season, yeah, I'm probably I'm going to focus on the 14s and 12s and the 11s and help Jeff on the out. Girl side. Yeah, absolutely. I, my my son plays uh, community. He's on his own path now. Uh, I'm learning from my father, that wise yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I step away, you know, and just do it from afar. And uh, football clubs need people who can put their hand up. I think. Yeah. Well, years. Yeah. And just, survive. Yeah, exactly, and, ju and just help out. And I, I, I love the, fe the female side of it. I think the girls um, got great sets of ears. They work really hard. Um, the attitudes they bring to the park is first class. Excellent. Um, again, it's just fast track that's happened too quick. It happens every Thursday. It's the worst part of the night when I've actually got to say goodbye and thank you. But I do thank you. I appreciate the time. Thanks for coming in. I really want to congratulate you for a great career, playing, coaching, now mentoring. That's superb. That clearly, the love of the game's there, and you want to be involved in some capacity and still be a part of it, but you're giving back, which is so important. So 46, 47 years, you are contributed to the fabric of this game in Melbourne, in Tassie as well. Um, but congratulations on what has been a superb career, and long may it continue. Humble, George. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Super. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, that was excellent. FNR Football Nation Radio. Bucciatis, no call. Score. Salamini for Cole. Cole on the run. Shoots. Two 0 Lazanowski with the free kick. Launches a rocket.
Trimboli. What vision! Bath blasts. Yes! That's it! Buljevic. Here's Bazanic. They have it! They have it! They might have won it! The Pioneers with George Danikian and George Kotsanis on FNR Football Nation Radio.